In today's video, I wanted to share my top five Lake District locations. So I've also just noticed how bad my hair looks on the camera. Uh, well, it looks bad every day when I look in the mirror, but obviously at the minute, I can't get the old barnet chop, so I suppose you're gonna have to deal with it in the same way that I am. I, I have to admit, I went to the fringe with a pair of scissors, and I started hacking away just because it was, <laughs> Just because it was getting in my eyes and I'm like too scared to start chopping away at the meat of the hair, but it's not looking the best. Right, anyway, <laughs> top five Lake District locations. Um, I'm well excited to make this video. I've got a little list here and everything. Um, two reasons, really. Firstly, and most importantly, um, especially if you, if you don't know who I am or what I do, um, I'm a full-time landscape photographer and I spend a lot of my time in the Lake District National Park. It's one of my biggest passions in my whole life. I absolutely adore the place. But my point is, I really think that I know it very, very well. I've got a lot of knowledge to share with you guys. So I'd really like to think that my top five locations are gonna be pretty nice spots. Um, but secondly, just to give myself a little bit of inspiration that when this lockdown is all over, I can head to some of these locations and really get stuck into the Lake District again. I can't wait, I miss the place. A hell of a lot um, so it's important to say at this stage that because I'm a photographer these five locations are going to have a little bit of a slant towards landscape photography basically whether or not they're worth photographing and going with your camera um, but if you're not into photography that doesn't matter it basically just means that these places look nice and that they're nice to photograph <laughs> uh, which is just a positive positive. Um, so I'm really excited to share these it was difficult I'll say that, um, but I have got, managed to get it down to five. So number five is a wonderful little spot in the central Lake District called Tarn House. I absolutely love this place. Um, it's accessible. It's quite small, um, so it's very easy to get around. It's um, very diverse, even though it is small, and that's probably why it has to make this list. Uh, very, very good bang for your buck. There's a couple of bang, bang for your buck locations in this list, so get ready. Um, but yeah, National Trust car park right next to it, within two minutes walk, there's toilets there and everything like that. Um, and basically what it is, is a very small lake with a loop track around it. I think it used to be three small tarns that were dammed, I think it was in the 19th century, they were dammed to create one big lake. But it's a nice flat loop track that goes all the way around probably get around it in like 40 minutes but you can take your time and if you want to go with your camera it is absolute top draw one of the things that i like about it the most is because it's in such a wonderful central lo location um you only need a little bit of elevation to start getting some awesome panoramic views and there's loads of hills and everything there so you can get that elevation really easy which coming back to what i said before the diversity there is class. You've got the lake you can, you know, photograph if you want. There's all different smaller sections of woodland, different trees. But then you've still got that opportunity to capture some really nice vast views as well. Some classic landscape photographs. And yeah, for that reason, it absolutely has to be in my top five because it's so accessible. But yeah, there's so much to do and see there. It is mint, absolute mint. So yeah, definitely check out Tarn House if you've never heard of it before. Now, number four is Buttermere, which is in the kind of northwestern area of the lakes. And that means that it's a little bit quieter because you've got to kind of go around um, the top of the park, I guess, depending on where you're coming from. Uh, it's, it's, it's not quite as visited as some of the other lakes, especially like Coniston Water and Windermere and stuff like that. Now, as well, that's because there's not really a town there. Um, it's just one big, beautiful lake. It's one of the bigger lakes in the National Park itself. And again, quite like Tarn House, it's just got a real flat, accessible loop track that goes all the way around. And again, same as Tarn Houses, the diversity is just class. You've got all these huge fells around it, fleet with pike, haystacks, some classics um, that you can hike up and just get some mint views down towards um, the lake itself, Buttermere. But yeah, there's a small town there, which is called Buttermere as well. But there's not much there. There's like a couple of pubs and I think there might be a chippy and a hotel maybe. But it just, it means that, you know, people don't flock there in the same that, way that they might do to Windermere <coughs> and Coniston or somewhere like that. But it'll still get busy. You know, I can't lie to you. It'll still get busy in the summer. 
I mean, you know, and most places in the Lake District will. Um, but yeah, a fantastic location, great place to go with a long lens um, if you're thinking more about photography, and definitely if you're into your hiking, the whole area is class. There's also another lake um, just to the north, I think, maybe a little bit more to the northwest. Don't quote me on that. Um, called Crummock Water. Um, which is very close by and once you start going up some of them fells you get the, a view of both of the lakes it is just outstanding Buttermere right number three Luffrig Fell oh what a spot I absolutely love Luffrig Fell um, it's one of my favourite places to take clients on my one to one workshops um, unparalleled views quintessential Lake District and again like I said it about Tarnhouse, bang for your book. So it's a smallish fell. I'd like to say it's a sort of medium sized hike. Of course, that's all kind of subjective on your fitness or whatever. Uh, but yeah, fairly easy hike, but the views are outstanding and because it's right in the center of the Lake District, even though it's not a really high fell, here's the thing, you get to the top and you get views of all the higher fells and mountains that are surrounded. Incredible 360 degree views, but um, what I would recommend is to hike up to it from um, the Rydal Water side. Um, there's a couple of car parks down there. I think they're called White Moss Car Parks, if you want to write that down. Um, because, again, the diversity is just mental. You've got Rydal Water. You've got a small woodland section. You've got rivers. You've got Grasmere, which is another lake that you'll sort of walk past on your way up to Lufrig Fell. But en route up to the top, from that direction, there's a smaller area called Luffrig Terrace. And, oh, the views from there are absolutely beautiful. Um, over Grasmere, back towards Helm Crag. Um, just outstanding views. And you've got caves there as well. So much to explore. Um, pretty family friendly. You know, the hike's not too difficult. Um, and definitely a top spot for landscape photography. Once you get to the peak... You've got views of the Langdale Pikes. You've got views back down towards Windermere, the lake. Um, you've got views towards the Scarfa Range. You can see Luffrig Tarned. Oh, it is just unreal. It can get very windy, though. Be warned. Um, so, number two. Uh, so, I'll say at this stage, it was very difficult between number two and number one. I know for a fact this one is a, a, a fond favourite of many landscape photographers in the Lake District. And this is Home Fell what a spot um definitely take your long lens if you're going to go up and you want to do some photography um but photography aside just absolutely brilliant i really do feel like it's got a little bit more of a, a rugged feel to it as well um probably a little bit less visited than luffrig town as well just because it's a little bit further away from some of the towns where a lot of people have based themselves um i'd highly recommend setting off from the side where you've got Yew Tree Tarn, which is a smaller lake. There's a National Trust car park just next to that. Um, yeah, a lovely little walk up to the top. Fairly easy, I'd say even a little bit easier than Luffrig Tarn. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, again, the diversity is just amazing. And similar concept to Luffrig Fell. Uh, when you get up home fell, it's quite small, but you get all incredible views of... Um, like the Langdale Pikes, and there's a small tarn up there as well. But what I really like about Home Fell, um, in terms of landscape photography, is there's all these like silver birch trees dotted about, and you can really use them as foreground interests um, in your photographs. And for that reason, you can really start adding a sort of extra dimension or an extra dynamic to your photographs with using them as foreground. Or, like I said, take a long lens, long lens start picking elements from you know other areas of the landscape it is just brilliant there's like a, um, a stream that runs down from it as well and that you kind of follow on on the way up on that hike on, on that route at least you get views down towards coniston water it is absolutely spectacular and i'd highly recommend it for a sunset hike for example you get beautiful views out to the west um yeah home fell what a spot now number one um like i say it was close between home fell and this one it's been a favourite of mine for many a year. Um, I'd say it was probably the place that really made me fall in love with the lakes, I'd say. And this goes to Wastwater, um, which is right in the sort of western area of the park. And again, 
Um, it holds many similarities to Buttermere in the sense that not a lot of people go all the way around there just because it's so far away from like civilization and the M6 motorway. So it's a lot of effort to get all the way around, but that effort really is repaid in, in the beauty there. Um, I love it mainly because it's definitely got a real rugged and wild feel to it, which are two things that I really like, especially where my landscape photography is concerned. Um, it's very vast. You've got incredible views up towards the Scarfell Range and Scarfell Pike itself, which is when I first visited the area to climb that particular mountain, which is incidentally the highest peak in England. Um, but oh, it's just unreal. You've got these incredible screes that come down into the lake itself. Fantastic to photograph. A few areas of woodland dotted about as well and just some amazing hikes around. You've got Great Gable there as well, which is an, an absolute like British classic mountain to hike. And again, from there, the views looking back down towards Waswater, just immense, absolutely immense. Um, but yeah, photography aside, I just love being there. Um, and although it's quite wild and rugged, I'll definitely say like it is still quite, it's still really accessible. Um, there's a road that kind of runs along what would be the kind of north, northwestern shore of Wastwater itself. And there's all sorts of like laybys and pull offs where you can, you know, dump the car and jump out and have a little explore. It's fantastic for that. And uh, there's no like big towns nearby. I think there's a couple, but they're more sort of like residential rather than touristy towns or villages like Grasmere or Coniston or Windermere, you know. Um, fantastic spot. And I think. Wast Water is going to be number one on my list for when this lockdown is over. Um, more just as like a, a landmark, you know, day one of the lockdown being lifted. I'm going straight to Wast Water, my favourite spot in the lakes. Um, really, really can't wait, actually. That's going to be amazing. But if you've never been to Wast Water and you look on the map and you think that's a bit of a trek, just forget about it. Get yourself around there. It is class. Absolute top draw. Um, also a really good location to start the hike up to Scarfell Pike as well. A lot of people do that. <clears throat> so that's it. That's my top five. And I cannot wait for the lockdown to finish so I can get out and explore some of these places. What I'd really like to say now is please comment below. What are your favorite places to explore in the Lake District for photography or just to be in? It doesn't matter. Um, like I said at the start of the video, I know the place really well. However, there's still a lot of places that I've not been to. There's still a lot of places that I want to explore. And I'd really like to um, hear what your thoughts are. Where are your favourite places in the lakes? And maybe you could surprise me with some spots I've never heard of or I've never been to. That would be awesome. But yeah, I hope you've, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Definitely check, check one or two of these spots out. They're all absolutely fantastic places to go with or without your camera. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next one. Out.